King, Gabby on the Sven, AU on the Grimstroke. We'll reposition Sand King. Uh, Windrunner. Wind Ranger. I've seen mechs, I've seen Fostevs, I've seen Blinks. It's always fun to see. You really should prepare for battle. Ooh, see, looks like TNC might go aggressive here. And I do really love this because uh, being tri lane is not something that Morphling enjoys. And when I look at this Wind Ranger, Sven Grimstroke lane, that's so scary. <laughs> so, spamming the, the Sebs, <laughs> tipping Seb. I think everybody in the game just tips Seb. Yeah, it's, right. It's three so. levels. It must be great. Oh, Except for Tim. Gotta be a rebel. I wonder if he got paid for Valve using his name like this. Would be nice. Each purchase, he gets a percentage for the Seb, especially when it gets into that 2000 uh, to battle. battle pass level range where you're just yelling well, Seb I forever. I mean. Every single time someone uses the SEP emote, I feel like one dollar gets added to SEP's money pool. Three heroes here for OG. Good Ooh, that's Fissure a great Locking in AU. That should be first blood here. Fate comes in. They've got the toss, and one more shot will come in. First blood here for Thompson. OG starting the game right. On top of getting that first blood, they're going to pick up three bounty rings. Right, and this is some this advice is for nice any mid player, pretty much. You can make a lot happen by going to the runes at minute zero. You might miss the block, as we see with Topson now, but there is just so many opportunities for you to actually get a kill or help your team secure bounties. And we see the results here. And as, uh, as a result of that, he instantly has his bottle. We spoke about Tiny needing some momentum, but getting first blood, well, that helps a lot. A lot of damage being thrown out here. Just by having that fissure as well as the Ignite early, Tim sitting at about half health, as is AU. Just trialing up against Anna and Sashka. But moving over towards mid is Jerak, so you want to be able to find that early fissure, help out Thompson continually as he got that first blood, and here it is. Oh, fissure, but Armel starts going instead of back towards the river down towards this bottom lane through the, through the lane area and now in trouble the avalanche comes in he's got the refraction is it going to be enough no tops in now back to back kills gets first blood gets a kill on armel and already having an amazing time a thousand net worth lead for og i really really love this rotation by jarex recognizing that they don't really have any kill potential top as i'm seeing that Looks like Jerex they don't really have any potential here. The Stormhammer coming in. Tim's just throwing pot shots at Jarex. He needs to be very careful. He's one shot from dead, and AU gets it off. He gets low. He runs away. Anna now. He's struggling a little bit. Running away from Gabby as well as Tim's. He needs to find an escape, and finally Jarex comes back. He's able to survive as he morphs into strength and keeps himself up. Level 1 morph is so weak. You could see him sweating. He's made of water, it's not sweat. Good point. Another great fish out. Are they gonna have enough damage to kill this Sven though? Stroke of Fate though is doing so much. Now they've got the Inswell. They're turning it around right on the Ogre Magi. They'll get yet another kill in this top lane. And the Shackle comes in, locking down Jarek. They kill off Anna. This could just be three kills over top of full cleanup potentially for TNC. They've got the Storm Hammer, the Mango is eaten, there's the stun on the Jerax, double kill for Gabby, and they clean up. One, two, three, as easy as ABC here for them, but... Oh, Tim's. Runs away, so Ooh. yeah, they lose. Anna was oh, yeah. so close um, to being in range with the adaptive strike there. I'm not sure how OG can really recover from this though. Because their try lane doesn't really skill better either. They just need to try to somehow salvage this and get some farm on Ana. Because I don't think this lane is winnable anymore. Opsen? 
being very low here. Be careful, I'm not doing a lot of damage. Looks like he was looking for the toss back to Jerex, but misses it and in turn is very dead. Very well played by so Armel. I was looking at this mid lane and it looked like the side blades were actually homing missiles. They seem to connect every single time. He gets the Tiny low enough where Tiny makes a desperation play to throw the TA under the tower. And he, he knew if he messed it up, he was going to give up his life. And that's ultimately what happened. And this is just now a lane that started well for the Tiny, giving up a kill there to Armel. Top's not going well, but and it might even be getting worse as Anna trying to get out of this one. Gabby's got Stormhammer in two seconds. They'll bring over the Ogre Magi, the wind run over. Gabby gets another kill here, and it is Anna's lane crumbling once again in back-to-back -back game. This is the downside of going for the Adaptive Strike at level 2. You have a lot of harassment, you have some good kill potential, but when they go on you, you're super vulnerable. They're staying aggressive in this top lane, maybe looking for the Stroke of Fate. Anna attacking both Gabby and Tim's trying to deter them under this tier 1 tower. It is so much pressure coming out from TNC. One lane we haven't really spoken about is this bottom lane, and you would expect Sand King to do really well, especially because Sep doesn't have a sentry, but we see Sep actually leading uh, by a lot in denies as well as last hit, so he's doing a really great job, and we've seen before how much a Furion can do with a good start. So we'll see what Seb will be able to produce for the side of OG. He's close to level 6, and Cuckoo... Fissure comes out as well as the Sprout to keep him next to both Jerax and himself. But it's not going to matter. He'll go into the Sandstorm, have control of this Bounty Rune. Pick it up. What a cool cat. All four Bounty Runes? No, no, two Bounty Runes, sorry. Bottled on two of them. Go in the way of TNC. But the stun comes out here onto Gabby. The Inkswell, they're trying to run down both Anna as well as this Ogre Magi of Akka. But the Storm Hammer comes in. The Adapted Strike had pushed him back so he didn't get stunned up on the Morphling. However, they still get the kill. And this is another kill over top. They'll try to turn it around as Jerax comes in. Ayu getting hit by that Adapted Strike and Anna gets himself a kill. Meanwhile, Seb kills off Tin. Very nice rotation by Seb. He got us level 6 and he instantly makes two kills happen in the side lane. On mid, Topson getting very low. Just one more hit. Looks like oh, he's gonna trap. be fine for now. Connects. They've got AU coming in again with the stroke of fate. Topson is playing on the edge here, staying this close, this low. And he gets hit by the Burrow Strike and will end up dying to Cuckoo, who makes the rotation over. And this is getting scarier and scarier for OG. This time he relies so much on momentum and right now he's the least fine Koi. Um, and it doesn't look like he's gonna have any cool blink dagger timing. In fact, he's still struggling to get his face boots. Cops in. Look how far behind he is in experience as well. About a level and a half behind Armel, which is something we saw in the previous game too where the Ember Spirit uh, of Topsons was just so far behind and just never made it up. And Armel ran away with the game. Little yeah, bit you don't want again. to give Armel any space because Armel TA is terrifying. Every single lane looking to go the way of TNC. They moved Anna over bottom against Cuckoo. He's underleveled against this Sand King, but let's see if OG can make anything happen. They've got Jerex nearby, the Adaptive Strike coming through as well as the Fissure, but that's just a little poke and a prod, but nothing more. So what I'm very worried about for OG right now is that they need to play S4 to give Ana the space to um, get some farm on this map, but at the same time, in order to really make plays, they need a blink on Shaker and they need a blink on Tiny. And because they lost the lane so hard, it's gonna be like another 10 minutes for the Shaker and maybe 5 for the Tiny. Which means that the next few minutes are pretty much free for TNC. 
Tim's coming up from seven. Now the fissure to block Tim's from getting it, able to run away or being able to run away. One more shot and Tim's will end up falling. The power shot comes through. They've got Ink Soul. Not going to land on anybody on the side of OG. They've got three heroes rotating over to help out this Windrunner who ended up falling. See if GNC can make anything happen in a return kill on the exit of OG, but unfortunately, OG are able to escape with that one. Unfortunately for TNC, but beneficial for OG. I'm surprised TNC stopped chasing that. They knew that the Shaker wasn't um, level 6 yet, and the Tiny isn't exactly scary either. But still, pretty disciplined play. I don't blame them. That's what OG needs. They need to get a couple more of those pickoffs, find kills where they can. But at the same time, you know, they need to recover. They've got Seb sitting top of the net worth for OG. Followed that up by the Mortal Flame going 300 attack. gold behind that. But in between the two of them is that Sand King. So three quarters of TNC, very farmed. All three lanes going really well for TNC. And they're looking to take advantage. TPing out towards top three heroes here. His top's in all by his own himself. Throw a trap at the way of this tiny, but misses. Meanwhile, Cuckoo just sandstorm under the tier one tower. Seb trying to pressure, look for this courier that has been shielded up. They aren't coming over like they want to make a play under the tier one tower. Let's see what they're able to do. Here's the Sentry Ward place. Now Cuckoo's been spotted. He'll morph into the Sand King. Burl Strike comes out, but now the Burl Strike back at Anna. And they still spot him. He's still under the sentry, but he's just able to TP away. However, you know, they don't get that kill. They'll be able to take the tier one tower. So they get something for pressure over bottom. I think that was a misclick from Ana. He had the strength adaptive strike ready as well to cancel the TP. Top tower is being attacked like nobody's business. Top TP out though. They still get the tier one. Gotta get anything they can grab their hands on. They're only down a thousand net worth. It's not awful. It's now two thousand net worth. But it definitely feels like TNC are ahead by quite a bit more, despite it only being. It's gonna be really important for OG to find a few more pickoffs because if they just wait for these blinks, this TA is gonna be. Like three slaughter toys and Radiant stuff like that. He has his blink. They wanna take a fight here. Now he's throwing. They've got the trap under the feet of Seb, but immediately taken out. Looks like Anna is finding some space on this bottom lane. Very nice Which for he him. desperately needed after the laning phase. Oh yeah, for sure. And he queued up a Lincoln's, which I kind of like because TNC has a lot of jump as Radiant's we spoke about. But at the same time, attack. even having a Lincoln's isn't going to be enough for him to survive for these fights. He needs more and he needs it fast. Performing really well, he's going into the Vlads. It was the Desolator next for Templar Assassin who picked up that BK, or uh, picked up the blink, not BK. Uh, first, and now working on the Desolator, we'll see how that starts to go. Is uh, it's Midas first for the Sven going into the Echo Saver? Maybe we see a Blink Dagger a little bit further down the line. Blink Dagger being built here by the Sand King as well, so they'll have that Blink initiation to go in on the OG, something that they're lacking right now, and maybe stop them from moving over onto a fight mid. Feels like it's the calm before the storm. Everyone is just trying to finish up on those few key items. Disability. Also, this tiny taunt is so annoying because it looks like Pango ulti. You know, he just jumps up and rolls like a ball. It gives me Pango PTSD. coming down from what was the aggression early on from TNC. It was pretty quickly and uh, things have kind of settled down where teams are just trying to finish their next item or so. Get ready. Like you said, calm before the storm. They're looking to make something happen, but they're waiting for these next couple of items. It'll be the Echo Saber for the Sven, the Blink Dagger for the Sand King, and having that initiation for TNC is what they want. As for OG, they want the same. On a blink dagger here for the tiny, they want that ability to get in. They'll, they're working on a blink dagger on the Earthshaker, but that is 
a ways out. See how willing OG are. Ooh, Armel setting up for Thompson. There is the yeah, smoke coming as well. So. Strike, tosses him back. He should be dead down. Sure. Team's coming over, and the shackle through onto the creep hits this tiny Thompson. Throws the avalanche out. Stroke of fate will miss. Thompson's still alive for now, trying to run his way out of this one. The ink swell, but the blink melt strike soul bind also used. And they will finally chase and kill this tiny. Oh, such a nice shackle. Really well done by Tim's. He got the blink dagger before he died, though, so. Not the worst thing in the world there for the tiny. And that's really big, actually, because they haven't seen it yet. They could try to make a play with this fresh blink. They have vision over RML on top lane, so it's definitely a juicy target. Regeneration. I'm really Able. surprised that OG and Ana specifically is keeping up with TNC's farming. Like, you would expect a TA to farm a lot faster than this. Than a Morphling, at least. But it's Ana, you... I mean, it's always surprising to see that he just pulls farm out of the map when you think there is none. Been able to recover quite well right now. He's going into the Lincoln Spear first. It doesn't look like OG's trying to set up. They still have this ward here spotting Armel. It's spotted AU. So they know that they're nearby. He's under attack. Hobson looking to use this blink, this fresh blink, and there it is. Blink toss right into the hands of the Ogre Magi as well as the Earth Shaker. They'll bring in Seb. The Power Shot comes in as well as the Soulbind and the Shackle. The Silence is through. Armel ends up dying. They'll look as Seb continuing to chase on the AU. He's got the Ink Swallow on top of him. The trap slows them up. But the Blink forward coming in from Thompson continuing on the AU. The Avalanche is used and not getting to that shrine. They'll take out a second. So OG show off the Blink. They get two for it. And the Fresh Blink paying off already. And suddenly, this game is almost even. When they're looking to go after Gabby, Seb moves over and Gabby just backs off, so now they'll try for the tier 1 mid. Cuckoo, he's just got his blink as well, so they're trying to debut a blink here. Blink, Burl, Strike, lands on two as well as the Shackle. They've got the Storm Hammer. They are stonewalking the side of OG. The Amalek is going to be thrown out, which finally hits on a Cuckoo. TNC give chase for a moment. They get that kill here onto the Ogre Magi and five heroes over mid for TNC. All the while, Anna just trying to farm as much as he can. OG trying to buy him some time. They are looking robust. Will look for the tier one tower, the blink throw strike. God strength use power shot coming in. Armel gets the kill on a set. They lock him in pretty well. And Gabby. He's in trouble. The Storm Hammer comes in. The Adapted Strike from Ada to get that kill. So a great trade there from OG. Waveform forward. Now their eyes are on the Windrunner. The Shackle locks in both the Tiny as well. As the Morphling Jerax coming in. He's got the Fissure available. Blue land the Stun. The Blink forward from Thompson. Avalanche toss. And now he'll morph into this Sven. Throw the Storm Hammer. Get the kill. And it looks decent for OG. But they still lose the Ogre mid. I feel like a broken record. Very well done there by OG to grab a lot of net worth back in their favor. And Anna now sitting top of the net worth. They have made so much space for this more fun. Ooh, Epicenter gonna come out. Over mid, girl strike. Armel here. Meld strike comes in and a quick kill on the Jerax. TNC has so much burst for damage. Earth Shaker, but well worth it to get the kill. But it's super important that OG managed to defend this tier 1 on mid. Because that tower gives you so much map control. TNC might still try to commit to take it, but just defending that tier 1 tower buys Ana so much space. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That's gotten his space. He's gone into that Lincoln's now going over for the E Blade. Like to seal a bit more farm here for Topson. Dyer's middle and tower. He's going has into been the Echo Saber. Armel, he's finished off the Desolator. AU goes down to Jerax, Seb, and the Ogre of Sakshka. And even so denied the tower. Has to feel bad for AU there. Finally 
take a little bit of a net worth lead right back to TNC. However, it's that's how close this game is. But OG have held on from the early aggression of TNC. They have built time here for Anna and might be looking to fight as they start to feel comfortable in this one. And it's always very interesting to see a situation like this where both teams are just really confident in their scaling. Blink. Avalanche toss right on the Gabby, the adaptive strike. They stun lock him and they get the kill. Now they'll look for more. The stroke of it comes in. The waveform's gonna be used by Anna to move forward on the AU. He'll grab a second. Thompson moving so quickly towards Cuckoo. The blink oh, just gets away. Avalanche on its Tim's, but a little bit further back. Cuckoo is back in the hands of OG and they will get themselves a third. Double kill for Anna and OG are starting to snowball. I feel like this is one of the biggest strengths for OG. They're so good at recognizing which fights they can take and when a hero is out of position. Even when they're behind or it's completely even, it can feel like OG is leading by so much just because of the fights they take. The TNC now need to be the ones who hold on. Not go well for them over in that mid exchange, but it was such a good job there from OG to get to Gabby. Avalanche toss, fissure, everything there to make sure he could not get away. They were able to grab that kill, grab two more off of that as TNC tried to disengage. And they did a good job of pressuring them over. And, and Anna now just the Eagle Song away from getting himself this E Blade and taking that next step forward in his item progression. And they're yeah, looking I to keep the pressure on. They smoked up. I have to give a lot of props to Anna. He's just so good at, like, not being a presence on the map at all. Just farming jungle, sometimes farming lanes, and then when it counts, he is there and he delivers. Blink, Echo Slam here. Used out of the Sand King. Avalanche with the Fissure. There's the toss again. Locking him in, waiting for Anna to just take that last hit and get the kill. He's now unstoppable as they grab themselves yet another. It was Echo Slam committed to that one. But OG will pressure over me. Look to take a tier two. Yeah, you're super happy to use an Echo Slam for that. It should secure the tier two for them, which is another pretty damn important tower. I've never seen Radiance structures looking so Radiance middle tower. Like TNT is quite committed to defending this one. Seb's continuing to farm here. He's got the solar press as well as the flats going into the heavens halberd he's he's doing really well he's just a touch below this spin and you know he was the one who had done well and he was the only lane who had really gotten well for og tnc did a good job in, in the laning phase mid and over top but he was the, once he got that six and started to move over and, and work with his team that's where it seemed like og started to take a little bit of control in this game and i'm a big fan of seb's item build too he recognizes that he doesn't need to be that split pushy high damage or kit kind of nature's profit and he can just be um the guy supporting ana because well that's how you win ti you just make sure that he has a good game right now gabby got this bkb it's fresh 10 second bkb with the desolator ready of tempar uh, as armel he's also looking for a bkb and i think that's going to be a moment where tnc feel confident in what they're bringing to the table They'll have these sure. BKBs, they'll have the Deso, the Blinks, the ability to maybe take down these OG Gabby. heroes, but bang a little too far forward is Gabby, the Blink, Avalanche, Toss, BKB's gonna be forced out, the Burrow Strike hits here onto the Tiny, and they've got the Shackle, it'll land on the tree behind him with the Spirit Vessel on top, Thompson ends up falling. So they get a great kill there over mid, what well, looked like it might have been a misstep from Gabby to move a little too far forward, knowing that the Tiny was there ready with a Blink, but it works out in their favor with the follow-up that they were bringing. You could see Ana being very hesitant to commit for that one. It's because he didn't see the Sand King and uh, we've spoken about like OG being a good lineup and all, but if DNC gets a good initiation, they still have so much control, so much damage, especially to a Mwerfling without the BKB. Alright, has this in this room, so he sees Armel. Armel, there's the Fissure. Seb's gonna be coming over as well. Anna, they've got the Solar Crest placed in from Seb. Armel taking a lot of damage here and unable to survive with the E Blade shotgun to the face of this TA. He's picking out the wood, but little did he know that Jarex was just in this next to him. Oh, 
Might be another one here. AU Ink Swell will pop stun up the Morphling, but they've got the Fissure and they've got the kill here for Thompson. So another pickoff for OG. These are big kills. They're just kills. grabbing towers and they're continuing forward. Teams have to be very careful. The e to tap the strike and they get yet another kill. They didn't even have the tier two the moment they went for that, but they got the tier two as they were pressuring the high ground. They get the buyback from the Grimstroke and all of a sudden this is looking really shaky for TNC despite being down only 4,000 net worth. Middle tower. How much Anna is doing. He'll wait for forward aggressively. And whoa, just getting hit with that e blade as well as the adaptive strike. He just fought back. Epicenter will be charged up. The Burl Strike lands out of two. Armel trying to follow it up with the Mel Strike. Thompson getting low. The Fissure hits. Thompson still alive. The wait for forward from Anna. And now he's tossed up. They've got the refraction. Trying to hide. Mel Strike finally taking out the tiny. But he's stunned up and in a lot of trouble. Armel needs to get out of this one. But the Echo Slam committed. Jerex gets the kill. And they will take out the TA dead for 50 seconds. Oh, Blink Pearl Strike as well as the Shackle. Jerex goes down. They've shackled up Seb. They'll buy back on the Earthshaker. But TNC will be very careful because he's been spotted. He's under the Sentry Ward and they take out this Sand King. Oh man. OG just continuing to find one after the other. The buybacks coming in from TNC. And they die again, unfortunately. Now they're going to lose this mid setter axe. And they might even go further. There's no buybacks on oh, TNC. Fissure just on the edge, Tim's. Pop the Lincolns, they've thrown the shackle, but Tim's unable to survive dead for 46. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. Radiant's middle Bay barracks very close has attention fallen. now. Looks like OG is satisfied with just getting this one set of wrecks. They know that the Aegis is gonna last for a while longer, so there is no rush here. They've got the Aegis for a long time, they could just reset heal up and move back in or they can fall back form up their next couple of items and and, and look to go in in just a moment got this just this age to play around they've got the advantage a 7,000 net worth lead they do feel like they're in a really good spot we haven't really felt the impact of this ta too much she's struggling so much in these fights because she doesn't have a bkb yet and at the same time she can't really man fight this weapon Storm Hammer, Cuckoo over, Blink Pearl Strike coming in as well as the Mel Strike. Seb able to survive, the Fissure hits on a three, teams comes over, the Shackle's not going to land on anybody, but they'll still get the kill. Anna comes in with the E-Blade, Adaptive Strike, Fissure again, and Tins ends up falling. But the Inkswell trying to stun up this Morphling long enough so TNC can get back into this one. Epicenter going to be thrown down, Thompson ends up dying, they'll look for another one in Sashka. They'll get themselves the Ogre Magi, they'll look over at Anna who morphs into the Earthshaker and throws out a Fissure. Anna still trying to run the waveform away, but they are keeping up. They're doing quite a bit of damage. The Shackle comes in. The Lincolns will be popped. The Stroke of Fate. And finally, the Aegis will be popped. Can Jerax help out enough? There's the Burrow Strike. Meld Strike coming in. They've got the silence through from this Grim Stroke onto Anna. And will finally take him out. It's a 10 times 3 going the way of Armel, which he desperately needed. And now they're looking for even more. They look over at Thompson. They've got the Burrow Strike, Storm Hammer, and everybody from TNC is getting into this one. It was just the 7,000 net worth lead a second ago. We're back at even. OG have thrown everything away to TNC. Beautifully capitalized by TNC. They recognized that that was a choke point and they just got off all of their control spells in that one confined space and OG just melted. And once... Uh, once the Moibling's team is dead, there is no way to protect him and he just gets control. It just, they threw everything away in that one fight. TNC pulling it back. I mean, they're, they're a set of racks down. It felt like this game was just going for, for OG. They, they felt so far ahead and all of a sudden TNC fun, find the one fight that they needed by their shrine and turn this game on its head immediately. One mistake. Dyer's middle tower is under an extraordinary amount of stress. They're gonna smoke up off that. Just I'd love to, to see an OG hero try to pick up a pipe because there is so much magic damage on TNC as well. Like we've seen before, just like the Sand King plus a power shot just deletes a hero from the game. 
PNC going for a smoke here. Are they gonna find Seb? Quite unlikely, as he just TP's away. And he gets over to mid. The smoke fizzles out here for TNC, but you know you can see the idea in their heads that they want to stay aggressive. They they feel so much confidence off of that exchange. The feel like they want to be the ones pressuring OG now. I feel like this is one of these games where it all comes down to initiation. If TNC finds a good jump and they start off the fight like um, 5v3, 5v4, they're gonna win every single fight. But the same thing could be said about OG. If Ana is in a good position and he just starts the fight with some E-Blade from like Windranger, it's gonna be a uh, fight being in their favor. At the same time, we see Topson just using his trusty shovel, digging up, uh, one of the item skins in a competitive match. Under That's confident. Of course, that turn into an Arcana for, for him that he'll show off during the mage. Radiant's bottom tower is being subjected. They go for the tier 2 bottom. I mean, they rip through these objectives, especially Anna, who's has fallen. able to morph into the Earthshaker and give himself the enchant totem. But being at the same time, Gavin is keeping up. He's close to having this Daedalus. Yeah, gonna have it now. I still think um, Ana's gonna be able to man fight him though. The problem for Ana is not like the Sven or anything, it's just the fact that there is so much control and he only has one Lincolns. So if the entirety of TNC jumps him, he's just gonna die because. OG doesn't really have any like defensive utility either. They don't have an Oracle, they don't have Glimmice. They do have one force on Jarex, which could help, but at the same time, um, he is really vulnerable in these team fights. Ooh, this is juicy. Looks like Ana is gonna go for the Aghanim Scepter on Lifelink. How often do you see that on, on more? I have to say, I haven't seen it too much, but if any player can make it work... I don't know. Boy, sorry. Speaking about the Aghanims, Topson is going for one as well, and I just bloody love this Aghanim. It's like an ion cannon. Just stand far away and just bombard the shit out of the enemy team. Both teams are trying to find the pressure on Roche. It, it, they both don't want to give up this next Aegis. It, it means so much, but finally, For sure, it's kind of cheese as well. Deacon, are you a bit disappointed looking at this Ogre's build? It's not Midas. I'll tell you that much. True. It should have been Midas. I mean, he does have braces. He's a he's a very tanky guy. He's just basically a bloodlust with 1900 HP. Is tower is under all they need, kinda. Must I Ooh, this is scary, though. Ogre, storm hammer, meld strike. Fissure's gonna be a complete whiff. Fire's top tower is under attack. 1900 HP, 13 armor. Dead in the fountain. Dyer's top tower is being attacked like nobody's business. Should have had that Midas there. Right, Agonims, coming out for Topson now. I expect big things from this man. I mean, it's a win-win. Either he destroys people or he does absolutely nothing and Reddit is happy. <laughs> we'll see how it ends up. Flame for a strike, that's into the air shaker. Two shot is Jerax, and now they've got the silence here on the Morphling. He's trying to get away from the side of TNC. Gabby controlling him there. Is the Evil Agents on to this Morphling, but he's unable to get away despite trying to get himself out. AU gets the kill on Anna. They look for more. Seb surrounded by these heroes on the side of TNC. But he is in a bad spot. Topson using that axe. It's not doing anything. And Seb just nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Ends up dying. Three heroes, four heroes gone on OG. And TNC right back with the lead. That was the ideal start for TNC. First they found the Ogre, then they take down Jerex on the Shaker, then they find Morphling, and it's all one by one. Now they could try to force a buyback, but at the same time, Roche has found 
So this is perfect timing for TNC, finding a crucial pickoff right as Roche spawns. Ah, now I understand why they have high level battle passes, so of course Roche bombs now. Like when you get a lucky Roche bomb or some nice crits. It's Papa Gaben thanking you for high level battle passes. There's nothing, nothing OG can do for that. And they were down to just the ogre and just... The, the tiny, I mean, what what is Tops going to do? You can't stop them from picking up this Aegis. Now they've got the second life here on our mill. It, yeah. it, it is completely flopped over from what it was 10 minutes ago. We've seen Topson have a huge amount of impact just with the tossbacks, but when it comes to scaling and remaining relevant, Not in my nature, but the hidden ones lost me. It's in the hands of TNC. We'll see what their next move is here. OG. Now on their back foot. I think we haven't really seen all game as TNC had been the ones trying to defend as long as they could to find themselves in a spot. They lost the mid tier three in Setter Axe very early on. Now TNC are the ones, the ones pressuring OG. Sun comes out, swing for a quick mouse strike coming in onto the Ogre Magic with a power shot, as well as the Spoon Hammer finally lands over through the figure. Jarek's on the back lines, maybe looking for a potential Echo Slam. He's got it up and ready. They've ghouls up Seb. Still, not engaged just yet. They find Tim's. They've got the Solar Crest on him. They do quite a bit of damage. The wave form forward with the Burrow Strike. They'll get the kill. And not only is it going to be Pop Gabby comes in with the big KB. The Storm Hammer comes through with the Morphling. See if they can get the kill onto the Anna. The onto Anna. Buyback comes out from the Ogre Man's right as well as the Wind Runner. They've tossed up Seb. Melt Strike. Not doing enough there. And TNC trying to disengage. Hobson blinks forward. He's got the Avalanche. Goes into the ult, but they've got themselves this Shackle Shot. The Echo Slam coming out here. Come Jarek. Save from behind and they'll pop the Aegis. The silence finally comes back to AU. They get the kill on a Gabby. He's going to be dead for 93 seconds. He's got five back. Oji continuing to chase the full set forward. Ogre for the Fissure. They've got him in the Sprout. Back into the ult. Throwing these trees that he sprouted around him. Don't find another one. Gabby is the only casualty here after they got Tins to buy back and they also pop that Aegis. It's always so scary to play against Jarek Shaker. You never know where he is and then Topson jumps in, makes sure that people are focusing him and Jarek gets a beautiful Echo Slam. I like the way OG took that fight as well. It was very drawn out like moment they saw the BKBs, they went back a little bit, then they bought back, they kept chasing, just very nice in fight execution by OG. And they might be able to force his fan buyback here, would be really big. In force buyback, that would be huge, and then for another 35 seconds, they've got the Hex here onto the TA, they've also got Glyph, so they're trying to buy their time. It's five heroes here for OG, looking to push the top tier three. I'll clean up the creep, please. Oh. Did you see that? Anna actually managed to use the tree volley from Tiny. I didn't know you could use it when you are more into your Tiny, but I guess it makes sense. It isn't an opener and you have Agonyms too. Shackle lands on a step, they're gonna charge up the epicenter, blink for that's gonna be the real quick, that's gonna land on a two, and now BKP's gonna be popping around out, trying to hold on, and Sven's gonna be coming back in four seconds time. They take out Anna, dead for 90. Now OG need to try and get out of this one. The BKP's gonna be popped by Seth, he'll also keep the out. The look for the Ogre Magi, right? Burrow Strike misses as Sakshka trying to weave his way through the trees, but there's no way out of the hands of TNC on this one. And they will get themselves a second on the exit. We could see once again OG was uh, showing signs of life and then Anna messes up once, he gets locked down and he just goes down. I feel like he really needs a BKB. Right, so I said earlier that um, Sep isn't really going for that split pushy kind of boy profit, but he's getting really fat and he added a Mjolnir to his arsenal now, so looks like he might be transitioning into more of a right picking style profit. 
Its bottom tower is under attack. As you say that, he tries to pressure the bottom tier three. TNC are over top. They go for a tier three of their own. The glyph is forced out in 30 seconds until they've got Anna as well as the ogre back. Abby front lining on this one. He's got the god strength. Seb comes in, but the barrel strike's gonna land here from Kufu. Seb needs to be a little bit careful. They've got the avalanche coming in. They've disarmed this this Sven. But the BKB is off the Dream Valley coming in. Gabby taking a lot of damage. He'll be forced to BKB. He's locked in the sprout, but is able to finally blink away. I feel like TNC is gonna be pretty happy with that. Um, they didn't get the, the racks, but they did get a meaningful objective because now they can take shrines. At the same time though, OG still has two towers on the bottom lane, which is always really important once it goes a bit later, because it means an extra fortification, and it means that if you lose a fight, you're not just gonna lose straight megas. A little bit of a, a life raft for them if they were to lose a fight over top. Seb clearing up some vision here. He is top of the net worth, so farmed. Let's see if he continues to try and rat out this game. He was bottom at the start of that exchange, trying to push out a little bit. But Roche, two minutes away at least, so there's some time here between now and the third Roche. Potentially give us a uh, ag sin. I would really love oh. Pickle strike. Seb in trouble. They've got the hex to follow it up. There's the shackle, meld strike, power shot, and everything there for TNC to grab yet another kill. Looks like they could be forcing something here. At the same time, Sven ult is running out, so looks like they probably won't. I would love them to give a tone to the TA because I feel like Templar Assassin's level 25 is easily in like the top 10 best 25 talents. Having a 6 second cooldown, 1.5 second stuns, that pierces BKB? Yes, please. Close to that level 25, continuing to pressure over the top of Visual yeah, and though Gabby forcing the BKB out and continuing to jump forward. He's got that gap closed because he's turned into the Earthshaker who's got the eggs. I mean, Ada has got a free blink here with a totem. He's hitting so hard. They've got themselves the shackle shot. Ada needs to be a little bit careful as the Sword of Fate comes in. He'll try to totem jump again. Armel, Lincoln's pop now jumping away. He's by himself and needs to be careful on the top end of this shrine area. The rest of the team a little bit further down. But finally, now regroups with his team. He has an arcane rune. So with the cooldown reduction of his Aghanims, he has a four second cooldown Lincoln Sphere while more. Four seconds. Right, I'm warming up to the idea of the Agonist, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's actually that kind of cool, the big if jump. you buy a BKB and you use it while morphed, you also have the cooldown reduction, even if you switch back to morphing. So much there for Anna. This game has been so back and forth, but it looks like we're in a spot now where both teams are pretty much even and a lot is gonna come down to this next Roche. Could be an Aghanims, could be a Refresher, but it's gonna be a big deal either way. That's what it should come down to the tree volley. Giving up his positioning there, they know where they are as the smoke is out from TNC. They've swapped spots. And oh, Anna, Lincoln's pop, Ink Swell. He's trying to get out of this one. Armel moves forward. He's got the hex, but they've also got the sun that's going to come through on the Gabby. Who's yet to pop that BKB? He'll be able to echo or totem out of here. And now, step with BKB pops it as well as Armel. The Echo Slam comes in, but it's not really that effective. They've got themselves the Avalanche as well as the Burrow Strike's been around. Seb on the back lines, and Jarek's taking a lot of damage as they'll finally get the kill here on AU, but Jarek's falls, as does Armel. Look forward, and oh, totem. Jumping, trying to keep up with Tim's. Here comes Seb. They'll sprout him up. Tim's just go for oh, Jesus. The totem shot from My Adam God. destroys him. This morphing Aghanims with the Earthshaker. I mean, we were doubting it before, but this just looks evil. 
Disgusting. Going for a strike landing on the two. They've got the silence through on the top sin. Let's see if they can do anything with this. The buyback comes out from Armel. Ar Ar They've got the wave form forward. Gabby trying to do it again. The Stormhammer hits on a two. Starting to hit away. The buyback is they've lost Cuckoo. They've got themselves the Hex and a Morphling, but it's not going to be enough. He's able to back off. Soulbind comes in, starting the tree volley. God's trying to get a pop popped here by Gabby. There's the stroke of fate. Up in the air is Topsy. Melt Strike comes in. Are defending, but is it going to be enough? Ogre Magi trying to give up his life, so the rest of OG could get out of here. Anna, though, will back off as he sees Topsin die and two heroes dead on OG. And with that, Armel does hit the 25 now, and looks like Topsin has a buyback, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it coming out to defend this Roshan. Pressure shard Roche. Could be pretty nice for this fan, just to make sure he has two DKBs because we see him getting kited more and more in these fights. It looks like OG isn't willing to use the buyback. Strike. That's gonna land here on the Jerax. They got the figure coming out from Anna as well as the E Blade through onto the Sand King, but Jerax is dead. There's a buyback, but three heroes gone right now for OG. The Aegis Cheese Refresher Shard picked up for TNC. Topson and Jarek still down for something like 40 seconds. And TNC is knocking on their high ground. Illusion. Can Anna do enough here? He's still very far away. They have two sets of wrecks on OG, but in their defense, yes. Dyer's structures are Got the health of Seth and Sakshka on this Ogre Magi, but the book comes out. The BK is going to be popped here by Gabby. So will sprout him up, trying to keep this Rax alive, and they start to blink away. He will attempt to exit. BKB is committed to this TP out. They really want to make sure they don't lose any heroes there, and I don't blame them. If you lose heroes there, that means... OG just forces out more buybacks of you and you don't really want to be in that kind of a position where you don't have buybacks and just one set of racks. So I really don't blame TNC for playing safe even if they do have Aegis Cheese Refresher. This is not the, the time to rush things. Right, Anna. Scotty. Scotty as well. Just 400 behind picking up his buyback as well, which he'll desperately need. They're going to need all the buybacks they can get. Gabby, 50 gold behind his, but he'll pick it up after cleaning up that, that camp. The only ones without buyback right now are Armel, who's gone for 4 minutes, 45 seconds on his buyback. 5 minutes here for Tim's. 4.5 and, and 5 minutes uh, for the grim stroke of a Kuku. I'm surprised there is still no pipe on OG. I would have expected maybe like Topson to try and pick it up or um, Jarex maybe. It looks like um, they're not really that interested in getting that magic damage absorption. Instead just picking up more traditional late game items like Dreams, Ghost Scepters, that kind of stuff. So TNC, they've got the Aegis Cheese and the Refresher Shard. Is there a moment they're kind of looking for, or are they just going to start to pressure bottom and go all out? I feel like they're just very hesitant. They don't really want to commit to anything, because they know one mistake, and OG just punishes you, but at the same time, they have a timing now with the, the Aegis. Looks like they just want as much map control as they can possibly get before really committing to any kind of push or play. Still got some decent time left here on the Aegis. Radiant's picked up now for the Sand King. As you can see, TNC, they only have buyback on the Sven. All of the rest bought back five minutes ago. That's probably why they don't want to commit to anything. We see OG. They are hungry. They know about these buybacks and they're like, if we can find some kills, if we can find some pickles. We can potentially get Megas here. 
which would be huge. Starting to posture over bottom despite not having the industry for first shard. Like you said, they want the buyback. There's a blink with the vertical strike coming into the pitch. It's gonna come out from Garrett. So DK is gonna be popped by Gabby as well as Armel will take out Anna so quickly. He's got buyback. God strength's gonna be popped here by Gabby looking for this ogre magi. They'll blink forward. Sun comes out on the team's not sure if it's gonna matter. Burrow strike in, they blocked him down. They'll get the kill. Two heroes gone on OG, and they will pay for their pressure. Thompson now needs to run. Fufu might be able to close the gap, but he doesn't have blink for eight more seconds. He uses the burrow strike to shoot a line up. They've got themselves the Yules. Got the lockdown here for Thompson. There's God Strength once, once again with the refresher shark being popped here by Gabby. Sprout blocking Thompson away and with the side of TNC, but he is still alive. BKB finally popped by Gabby. They'll get the kill onto this tiny takeout three as they try to disengage and TNC come out ahead on that engagement. I have to say that was some very aggressive positioning by Anna. He knows that they don't really have any defensive abilities, so looks like he was about to get out because it was getting too dangerous, and then he just gets jumped, Lincolns get cancelled, and then he just falls. TNC, they want something, but at the same time, they still don't have these buybacks. So, even now, with three heroes down, five heroes up, Aegis up, they're still hesitant. They've got the Sprout, they've got the Hex, trying to move forward. Armel forced to pop that BKB. And Fissure. It's on the AU. They've got the Avalanche to follow it up and get the kill. Seb will get credit for that one. Get one of their own, dead for 106 seconds. But so buyback back in 50. So they find this really big pick off on Ana and they don't get anything out of it. They don't get another set of racks. I mean, they got shrines, I suppose, so that's nice. But you really want to find more when in the late game you pick off the enemy carry. My god, Seb is so rich. It's not just the dollars for people using SEP, it's in-game gold as well. He's up on the sin by 4,000 net worth. He has done so well this game. But yet still TNC looking close to pulling it all the way back from where it once was. I would say the midway mark when OG had a, an 11,000 net worth lead. Shackle comes out on the onto Seb. We'll see if they can follow it up. Now they've got the Hex as well as the Spirit Vessel. BKB is going to be popped by Armel. The Burrow Strike lands onto Seb. They've got the E-Boy thrown from Anna to Seb. But is it going to be enough? Gabby moving forward. They'll get the kill. He's going to be dead. He'll buy back immediately. The Avalanche comes in. They've also got the Shackle. That's going to lock in Anna. Who's in trouble once again. They've got the damage. He'll get the kill. He's going to be dead for 100. He'll buy back immediately. They've lost nobody on the side of TNC. Cuckoo moving over. The Finch is going to kill Jarrett. They've got the Silence coming out on his Seb. He just bought back. He needs to be careful. Moving forward. Tops for the Avalanche running out of two. Tins alive. Oh, just throw a little bit longer. Kuku, he ends up dying, but on the ball, he's tops into the damage coming in for Tansy, it's just too much. Gabby ends up dying, he'll buy back immediately, and Silence is out, onto the tiny, the Vigiri, something from Jarex, and now the chase is continuing on from TNC. They'll throw the Storm Hammer, they'll get the kill on the top, and they'll go over at Gabby, the Storm Hammer is going to be thrown back from Anna. onto Gabby, who's able to be saved by the Glimmer Cape. OG trying to disengage here as TNC, they want to finish it off now, knowing that the heroes have fought back. Thompson dead for two minutes here with no buyback. The Fissure comes through from Jarek. They'll take out Shashka. And now, TNC, can they get anything else? So, only the TA, Windranger, Shaker, and Ogre still have buyback. All the rest of that. Or, Tim's dead. Jam on the deck. OG get one back there. But Armel coming over. Again, you gotta remember this is Sid who just fought back. The traps are gonna come out. The BKB's gonna be popped here by Sid as well as Armel trying to run the burst right inside of the board playing. And now Armel will go into the belt, but he's hexed up. He's been spotted. They've got the gem. They'll get the kill. Team's by back. He's got the check on the two of these heroes. And now Gabby moving over. Oh, burst strike as well as the storm hammer. They'll get the kill on the Sid and Ada. They just go back. They're dead for two minutes. There are oh, no buybacks man. in OG except for Jerex, but still. TNC has to get through all of these towers and all of these buildings to get Megas. I'm not sure if they have the time. They could just try to go for the throne as well though. Creeps are coming through the middle lane. This has to be a really scary time for both teams. Oh. 
You're dead for two minutes. Jerex. And, oh, Jerex. He's got Echo Slime to work with, but that's about it. Here's God I Strength. They're going after the tier go three. Through. They have time. That's exactly what they're going to do with 75 seconds without Seb or Anna. Blink Pro Strike coming in from Kuku. TNT might be able to bring this one back. They'll take out this Earth Shaker. He's going to buy back immediately. He's looking for the Echo Storm of his life. Looking for the Echo Storm of his dreams. But they've got the Ancient exposed. And now, Gabby moving forward with the God Strength. Shot's going to try and survive here. Getting taken out by everybody on the side of TNT. Taking the Ancient again. The game TNC. They win it 2 to 1. What a performance. It felt like it was slipping away multiple times.